Welcome back to Not A Mod, and this is the episode four of the Not A Roadrunner series. Um, this one is basically all to do with the gearbox. Basically, after I fixed the starter motor, I took it out and got stranded because my reverse gear didn't work, which turns out it was all because of, well, a tons of different things. But this is uh, first video, is how to pull out your gearbox. Uh, I got a guy called Dave to rebuild mine. So uh, yeah, I had uh, my mate G, bail me out because uh, I needed someone to steer while I pushed the Plymouth back into the car uh, like parking space. An added note, um, sorry for the shoddy filming, I wasn't really coming to terms with how to film stuff yet. So I uh, hope you still enjoy the video, see you in a bit. So first things first, you've got to jack the front of the car up. Uh, I uh, personally got the guy called Dave to rebuild my gearbox and uh, I met him from the UK Mopars forum. Honestly, couldn't recommend this forum enough. Any problems you have with your car, there's no like judgment or anything like that. It's just ask any question you want and they will help you out as best they can. After that, you've got to unbolt the drive shaft. That's four bolts and two brackets. And then you've got to slide the drive shaft towards the back of the car to unslot it out of the gearbox. Yeah. Next step is to unbolt the start motor and begin to undo all the torque converter bolts. So in order to take off all the torque converter bolts, you're gonna to need to rotate around the flex plate. So to do this, you're just gonna to have to turn the engine over by hand. If you don't know how to do this, then check out my start motor video for an in-depth walkthrough. Before removing your last torque converter bolt, make sure you to paint over your flex plate and torque converter. This is so after you've rebuilt it, it's nice and easy to marry the two up again. The torque converter mounting holes are actually aligned perfectly with the flex plate holes. Uh, this is because then it can only bolt up one way, which is why you have to mark it. So when it, you're reinstalling it, it's nice and easy to bolt it back up. Removal of gear linkages and kick down linkages are normally not too hard. Most of the time you have to unbolt the bracket or uh, undo the split pin that's holding the linkages together and then remove anything that attaches the gearbox to the other components of the car. Next, you're gonna to need to disconnect your sensors. So that is your temperature sensor and your speedo. A 727 gearbox is held on by five bolts. So now you can undo the bottom two. We crack the sump plugs and let the gearbox begin to drain. Once it's sort of drained to a trickle, then you can undo it completely so you can empty out the sump. Next is to unbolt the cross member holding up the tail shaft of the gearbox. Don't forget, you're gonna to need to release your parking brake because that is gonna be attached onto that cross member. The final three bolts that you'll need to undo is the one holding the dipstick in, and then the two at the top of the gearbox, and then you're ready to drop your gearbox out. As you can tell by my voice, it was pretty traumatic, but we got there in the end. Doing well, really, but rebuild ready. Rebuild ready. In case you got your oil line. Oil line, I'll, I'll cry. Gear linkage. Um, I think it's an air temperature sensor, I'm not entirely sure about that one. Uh, this one is just the where the oil line comes from. And then here is your uh, speedo. So yeah, this is where um, we're going to take it apart and uh, see what's wrong with it. And then this is where the guy's no doubt going to tell me that it's completely fine. <laughs> just to be a pain. A full rebuild is pretty in depth because it involves replacing the clutches, bands, uh, seals, and basically everything inside the gearbox which isn't the hard parts as they've put it, which is basically all of the drums. Here are some shots of the progressive building back up of the drums from the tail shaft end right out to where the torque converter will go in. During the rebuild I did think, why just repair, why not upgrade? So I ended up upgrading the Sprag, I ended up upgrading the valve body and several other components. 
Upgrading the sprag on these gearboxes is always a good shout because they are actually held on by a single grub screw normally. So if that goes wrong, it will blow out straight through the cabin. And the only breeze I want to feel in my car is when I have the windows down. Upgrading the valve body was always a good shout because it just means that it will shift harder through the gears. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in part two where we're gonna be uh, clearing up the gearbox and the talking better in a bit.